Kevin, we're here with Josh and Troy from Queens of the Stone Age. Um, now, guys, uh, Era Vulgaris is uh, the fifth album. Uh, it, it, since the band has had a different lineup for every album, does that make uh, progressing th through different sounds easier? Um, Troy? No. <laughs> no, I mean... Because it's been a slightly different sound for every album. Yeah, but... but but that's our job. Also, oddly familiar, I think too, and uh, uh, that's the idea: is to to retain some piece that you understand. It's it, hopefully you understand it's Queens within five seconds, you mm. know, and and also to um, to push hard enough where it sounds totally different, you know. I, we have to reacclimate our fans to us reintroduce every time, but but um, we feel like that's what we're supposed to do. So what's the the common thread holding it all together then? Because it's been, you know, even though it's only sort of been one member at a time change, one or two, it's, it's a totally different band now than... It's basically, sure. we're not gluten-free. we <laughs> actually quite fond of gluten. Really? And gluten is a secret. <laughs> uh, well, and also, too, I think that the instead of, you know... Uh, Queen's ideal is more of a concept than anything else. Like um, we try to play the best music available to us, uh, without respect for genre, and we try to make it sound as different as possible. That's the idea, mm. and that's the common thread. It, that never changes, you know. Mm. I notice so uh, there. <laughs> Ooh. I notice um, the the two of you and uh, Joey have uh, more or less equal songwriting credits throughout the whole thing is it as simple as the three of you actually sitting in a room and just creating a song together or does someone drive it more than the other i think however it works it works um but usually we're in the room you know when when it's being made or you know during the process all of us are so you know we don't have depends. a habit because that's how you develop a rut so we don't there's no need to forcibly have, um, it's my turn to drive how this song goes and you get to do the next one. It, uh, you we try to take, you know, much like water that becomes a river, that goes the direction it's supposed to go, you mm -hmm. know? So it's very philosophical. Did that trip you out? I dug it. I a like little that bit. too. With but you guys are the ones on acid, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now we weren't, we're not on acid, we were uh, sniffing glue in the parking lot. Oh, okay. Well, then, my, my mistake. <laughs> it's, is it difficult not to get stuck in a rut? I mean, it's uh, been 10, uh, 11 years now. Well, I think one of the keys is not to be in a hurry. We, we don't, we're not, we're not, we work hard and work all the time, but we're not in a rush to get to the next thing. Mm. And so it's about enjoying the phase that you're in because you don't want to, you know, to rush is to sort of try to act like this is some sort of race that we're supposed to get to the end of. And we're, that's not really, that's not the sort of context that we're playing music in, you know. So it's just about taking your sweet time and enjoying what you do. Yeah, right. Do you, um, when I say sweet time, I mean really, really sweet time. It's filled with like s synthetic sugar. Confectionary gluten. style. Gluten, no gluten. Gluten? No gluten now. Not there. <coughs> God, it's, it's, a it's a beautiful I'm day I'm outside. I'm looking at... I'm totally looking out there and not even listening to what I'm saying or yeah. what you're saying either. It's really <laughs> I'd, I'd give you the guided day, tour right? of um, of my home city, but um, oh, is this your home city? No one can see. I had breakfast on DeGrave Street today. Really? Yeah. Uh, and what did you think of it? That, that's a nice oh, I always alley. go. I always go there for breakfast because it's there's a bunch of cool little cafe possibilities, and you can get Converse good like good Converse on the other end of DeGrave's when it goes into the little mall there. Yeah. It's a good place to get vans and stuff. Yeah. What do, do you actually get the chance to go out and see a city when you're on the road? Yeah, I mean... I mean, you know, that, that's DeGrave Street. That's breakfast, but, you know, do you get to see... It's lunch, too, dude. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got to go... some form of meal. you you got to go out and see what's around. Otherwise, you get stuck in the hotel bus grind, you know? And that's not good for you, you know? It's not good for your psyche. Mm. And we went out to dinner uh, in St. Gilda last night, right? In St. Kilda, yeah. Kilda. Uh, went to the Stoke House last night. It's cool. It's a good little place, there. Thank you.
<laughs> All right, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Yep. It's always good. Owned by Josh. Uh, it's, it's not. Whatever. No, it's not. I am. Um, he lied to you too. <laughs> I've, I've completely lost. Where we were. What were you were talking about? about? We were talking about we're music talking about a minute ago, and then suddenly you had me at gluten. You said hometown, and and I want you to know that uh, I've spent some time here too. And that's yeah, that's it. You can be an honorary citizen. Melbourneite. Melbourneite. It's very good. See, it's like Vegemite, but from Melbourne. That's right. It's um, anyway. Julian Casablancas and yes, um, and uh, Trent Reznor and also Mark Lanigan have all been guests on uh, on Paul Garris. Although Mark is pretty much actually Mark has a pretty sweet deal with you guys in that no he doesn't joy. really have to do a whole lot of work, but he still gets to uh, tour and and play on the albums. Well, I mean the thing is that we love Mark and Mark is is uh, you know he's Mark. I mean what what more do you need with a, a sound a sand and gravel glass filled voice that sings beautiful melodies yeah he's got he's got a certain thing like i would say when mark sing if he were to sing about toothpaste i'd want a brush you know what i mean yeah he's just got that voice that's it's it's beautifully messed up you know and so it's hard not to ask him he, and he's in the queens he just he's the one guy that's got the hall pass and it's actually a great example of what the band is like because mark you know, is out touring with the Gutter Twins right now, and and done solo records and stuff with Bell and Sebastian, and and um, uh, I'm sure someday we'll be touring with us at some point again. Mm -hmm. You know, too. It's it's not to to walk away for a while and for us to do other things isn't the end of anything. It's just this is how it works. Yeah. Yeah. You know? so I know. Um, I've seen you play a couple of times with him, or, or while he was on the road with you. Um, is it difficult to cover his tracks when you're gone? Well, I mean, I think the key thing to do is not try to... We don't try to do impressions of Mark, you know? I don't try to sing like Mark. Mm. But we play songs that he sang on, you know? Um, because they're fun to do and because now they are different in, uh, once again than they would be. Mm. And changing it around is one of the... Well, one of the things that we like to do the most. Yeah. So it's it's not... It's not a big deal that that uh, he's not there. It's just a big deal when he is here. Mm. You know what I mean? Is that the same philosophy with uh, Nick? No. <laughs> but but do you ever play the songs that he once sang? Oh, uh, we do Millionaire. Yeah. yeah. That's about. Yeah, that's but that the, was on Desert Sessions as well. Yeah, I mean he didn't sing that song originally, so we do another take on that song. Yeah, right. And uh, what about Julian and and Trent? How did they come about? Well, I think if we're going to, you know, one of the th things that we think about in doing collaboration is, will it trip other people out? Does it, does it seem like it doesn't make sense to others, you know? Uh, and I think both Trent and Julian wouldn't have been someone's first guest for us to do something, so that's a good start already, you know? And, um, you know, they're friends of ours and... and great musicians so it's kind of like why why not do something mm. mm -hmm. and uh speaking of uh, doing things that people wouldn't be expecting in uh, canada you re-released era vulgaris it's pretty much the same as the australian tour edition except you have three covers on there you've got an elliot smith one a uh, billy idol one and a brian eno one um, and I, I actually think the brian eno song you played probably isn't such an uh a strange choice but the other two uh where did they come from or where did the brian one come from well, that's as well? that's kind of the point is that, is that for us i think the, the brian brian Eno thing might have been a little stretch but it kind of doesn't matter because we're just doing well, he's it. saying it wasn't a stretch for us to do you know yeah but I, I thought I, that song actually sounded yeah that like made quite queensy yeah it made sense well you know you know the song yeah right well, i'm so, saying i'm saying yeah. from, from our perspective it it, it it might be it was like the third or fourth choice yeah. what i'm saying is that you know all the other songs kind of you know they just sort of they felt right at the time and that's how they come out you know well and in choosing covers too i think you get a chance to play songs that that sort of push out um 
uh, into styles that maybe you wouldn't normally do. It's it's you know it's just a good moment to stretch your wings a little bit, mm-hmm. and you know like the song Christian Brothers by Elliot Smith is so beautiful and gut wrenching. It's so heart wrenching and it grabs you in the guts and, and yet it's so mellow too, you know. And so it's just a cool chance to to jump around as far as styles are concerned, you know. Do you try and make them your own or do you just play them? Oh, no. Uh, it, it depends on if we see an opportunity. Like with the Elliott Smith song, we I think we made it our own, you know. And uh, it, it just, uh, you just kind of have to feel it out and see what makes sense. Mm. And, I th- and we did the same for White Wedding, you know. We took it and kind of made it our own. Yeah. Yeah, right. Um, you're out here for the V Festival. Obviously, you know, strangers to festivals. The first time I saw you was on the big day out. Uh, in 2002 I think uh, do you approach a festival show differently to a headline show yeah I think so I mean you know in in sort of it depends on on the circumstances you know we're doing our own show we're, we're playing some some more eclectic stuff maybe you know that mainly our, our fans would know and it's you know it's our show we play longer but when you're in a festival setting you, you kind of want to you know, hit everybody immediately, and then you kind bombard of them and make them like almost like lean on top of them. You know, yeah, and then you you kind of lean more on what people know, and then you're trying to reach more people out there. So that's kind of you know, you kind of mix the two up a little bit, I guess. Plus, I mean, in a very friendly way, you try to blow everyone else away. So I think <laughs> you know, you know, it's like you, what you want to do is. Uh, be like a, a fireworks grand finale but for the entire time yeah you know? right and what we vow to do is is not know what we're going to do in advance and that's something that that not all the other bands can say by not knowing what you're going to do in advance do you mean in the next song or in the next concert quite well from, <laughs> yeah i mean across the board <laughs> yeah it won't just be this it won't be the same set uh we may even change the set we just wrote we may change one of the songs mid-song and turn it into something else and one of us could fall off the front of the stage and hurt ourselves yeah which you know makes for great tv well what what happens is is that um we're like you and that we don't know what's going to happen and i like that and well, i like you like that too i like you lots really? is it yeah my man boobs it's the chest well, on it's your the chest, chest. <laughs> checkmate there you go um, are there going to be any more desert sessions? Are there going to be any more out? boobs? <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> I've I'm only not, got two. <laughs> that's all I need. That's uh, that's three too many in some countries. That's, and, that's uh, <laughs> um, here's another thing. <laughs> I'm never going to stop doing desert sessions because there's no reason to. It's just a fun. Uh, the excuse is that it comes out and is released, but really, it's just a chance to play and make nice with others and and an environment that isn't sort of you don't have to promote desert sessions you just it's about the creation of the music mm. and that's really cool so do you have another one planned in the near future or yeah i mean i have one i'm in two bands and i also have a kid so i'm it's like time is tough you know mm. uh, and so i was going to try to do one at the end of last year uh, but i'm still finishing up the eagles of death metal record so which was actually going to be the last question that I have written down here. Um, could you want to well, let me see the, that list? Do you want to see the very last one? God, it's all like printed out in time. Will you have anything to do with any future Eagles of Death Metal albums? Well, I'm, I'm, the band is me and Jesse, so yeah. <laughs> but you, well, you weren't touring with them, so that's well, where that I, question came but from. Only because when I tried to be at two places at once, I tried to be in two places at once, and I just, I actually physically could not do it, no matter what I tried. I went to healers, magicians, mm-hmm. shaman. I went and got some ramen. I did all that stuff. The, did you go to the ramen shaman? No, but I was so magical that I was in danger of disappearing into a hat. Wow. And then you would have been in zero places at once. Exactly. And that would have been a b- big problem for both bands. You know what they call that? They call that nirvana. The, the place or the band? It's just a state of mind, band. baby. It's like Victoria. It's just a state of mind. You know? <laughs> That's Victoria's right. in a deluge. It's a kink song, too. What, Victoria's a state of mind? Well, or you're in a Victoria state of mind. A Victorian state of mind. 
<laughs> you ever seen an Elizabethan <laughs> collar? Thank you so much for joining us. I love you. <laughs> Bye, everybody. I love you too.